All right, welcome to this, uh, this edition of uh, the Upper SDK Issue Triage. Um, I've just started the recording. Uh, remember, anything that you say can and will be used against you <laughs> in, all, in all versions of the future. Um, and we are, want to make sure that we're upholding, uh, as, as normal, uh, the code conduct, as always. Let me share my screen, and then uh, we'll get started. All right. Couple things around real quick. Perfect. So that's our list uh, that we're gonna we're gonna chew through. Um, appreciate uh, all involvement as we go through this process. Uh, I didn't see Camilla online. I didn't. Like she... Oh, great! There you are. Thank you. Uh, so there's. <laughs> a... <laughs> uh, yeah, there's an issue that you opened up regarding cleaning up of after test. Looks like there was a pull request merged. Um, is that, uh, is there more to do on this, I guess? No, this one is to, to address few comments that was made in, in this pull request uh, after the, you know, so uh, check if you, uh, you should check the errors in the after tests ones for all tests. So, because now we have in the integration tests, we have Ansible, Go, and Helm follow the same standards. So, right. it is very helpful because we can apply the change horizontally. Um, so, these are maybe good for us. You should, you know, it's like a shaky. It has a comment, Joe makes some suggestions like we don't need to do this step, maybe we can, you know, simplify. Um, so it's just to address this comment made. Hey, yeah, um, oh, before we add any labels to this, this particular issue doesn't have, doesn't follow any template. It doesn't really have any information about what the issue is it just asks that you follow some links so before we add stuff that new community members will be looking at um like these labels camilla can you please go back and fill this out correctly yes i can good I, issue and whatnot i i don't even know what this is about yeah it's just a, okay if you're checking the first just it should bring you a better context sorry i i didn't make it easy in a good way uh, the first comment is in all tests we have after run the tests we have a function that you run and the test function has the goal to remove the from remove the manifest that was applied so would you be like a now we have a, a lot of steps in this function, so we can simplify it in the way that you, Joe suggested in the first comments. And maybe we can just have the make and deploy instead of doing all that steps. So it's like it's very simple, you know, just go into all after test functions in all integration tests and you try to simplify as Joe suggested in the comments. But I can I can supplement and put are you, in a better you, information. Yeah, that'd be that'd be great. Are you suggesting that we implement make undeploy in this issue? We have the make undeploy in the in the making file. For Ansible and Helm we have if I'm not wrong. And I believe that we can also just replace the making file target in the test as well and use that, like in the docs, like we, I, I, I doesn't know if we actually suggest that it could be a, a possible, a possibility. Um, okay, well, I, I would, if, if this particular, <clears throat> issue is just about um, refactoring some internal test code, then make that the issue description and then follow up with a suggestion saying we could use make undeploy if that exists. Yeah, I, um, I will do that. I don't like if, if this is going to be a good first issue, it needs to be pretty clear 
what the issue is about and what the user needs to be uh, doing here. You are totally so, right. Hopefully Sorry. not piling on, but my, my comments were roughly the same. I, it's hard to know whether there's uh, an acceptance criteria. In other words, when you're complete, when this is done. Yeah. And it was really tough to see if this was maybe an epic. In other words, a number of tasks. Uh, be, well, for multiple reasons, but one of them is there's something that was referencing it. And was, oh, that was, I see. That's the thing that's being referenced up here. Got it. Yeah. Oh, got yeah. It. If okay. you click on this link, you'll have all information. But I will try to make it clear and give you more context as well. Perfect. Uh, I think it's nice, yeah. I think it's very easy, but if we provide more information, new people yeah. can, can use that to learn. So it's nice. Right. I agree, uh, I agree. I will do that. Do we want to leave this one untriaged and then- Oh, I was actually going to recommend the same up? too. Yeah, yeah, exactly, Austin. Let's, let's re-triage it after we know more. Next, uh, is that, does that work for me? Yeah. I was also going to add that, uh, Everything's easy when you know how or know what, <laughs> but that's a, uh, probably too circus. Maybe, I don't know. Okay, uh, next up, uh, make the manifest, ignores, config, uh, customize. Okay, so this is the first time I'm looking at this. Um, make manifest. So just to start off, um, yeah, so this person looks like they're adding um, some pretty standard stuff to a customization.yaml, which should apply mm -hmm. uh, annotations to CRDs. And there's two things I would say about this. One, um, I don't know if that path is correct. Either they added a customization.yaml to an incorrect path, or they just duplicated a path element in the correct path because there's CRD, CRD in the path. Uh, so that might be part of the problem. But also, this doesn't have anything to do with the SDK itself. This is a queue builder issue. So I think the right thing to do here would be to ask if that path is correct and say, regardless, this should be asked upstream in the queue builder repo and close this out. Anybody want to grab that or I can grab it after the meeting? Yeah, I can handle it. Okay. Makes sense. Uh, perfect. Yeah, so I won't milestone this either. This will probably, it looks like it'll close out based on just what we talked about, which is perfect. Yeah. Could you assign me to that? Oh, yep. Of course. All right. Helm operator, uh, custom uh, cluster resources were not cleaned up after installation failure. Helm, okay. Uh, looks like Joe is engaging. Okay, it looks this looks the, to be roughly the same in upstream challenge, right? Yeah, I think we need to wait for some kind of response uh, to one. Uh, do we not have that? Doesn't it need more information or something? Needs discussion. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we have two of those. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> exactly. I think it's the second one needs information. Yeah, it needs information yeah. is like if the issue author needs to provide more information and yeah. needs discussion is if everybody needs to discuss the content of the issue. Cool. Yeah, I think we nailed that. that actually, the humorous part there was when I was in the Navy, we had a phrase that was 50, 50, 90. And that's if you had the 50, 50 chance, 90% of the time you'll get it wrong. Uh, but somehow we succeeded <laughs> on that one. <laughs> Uh, all right. Oh, um, should we backlog this then? Uh, or how do you want to, you want to leave it untriaged or I think normally when we need more information, we'll back, we backlog it, but yeah, I'm open. I'll yeah. just do that. Um, maybe we should assign someone who's on the call.
Yeah, I know Joe's assigned, but I'm not sure if he'll have the bandwidth to stay on this. I think that should be okay for now if they haven't responded, especially. Yeah, I think if we were going to close this, then I would I would agree. But it looks like we're needing a response, which Joe might still reasonably respond to. Cool. Gotcha. I have a lot of faith. <laughs> Jonathan, uh, you want to? Hey, so uh, this is a thought I had that sprung out of some discussion on the uh, pull request to the community org repo where we're hashing out what the community roles are going to be. Um, namely, there was some discussion about what exactly, like what between a, a member, a reviewer, and approver, like who can LGTM things and what that does. And it led me to understand that I really don't understand a lot of things I thought I understood. For instance, um, when a pull request is eligible to be merged, I thought it was when it had one LGTM and one approval, but based on the discussion we were having in that pull request, it seems like there's some kind of secret sauce about some LGTMs count and some don't based on whether or not you're assignable to the issue or something. And I don't, I don't even know what that means. So I would think someone who's thinking of opening a pull request certainly wouldn't be able to figure this out because I've been here for a while. I still don't know. Yeah, this is sort of confusing. Um, those owner's files actually aren't connected to the machinery, it turns out. Um, so th those owner's files would be used by a bot, but since we're not really using that bot, um, I, I don't think there's teeth to what we've discussed there. So it's all kind of like honor system, I guess. It all hinges on using Tide. So right now, today, what is the, I know pull requests are merged manually, but what is the, what is it supposed to have before you merge it? Right now in the operator framework organization, any, uh, anybody who is, um, who has privileges in that repository to approve stuff uh, can do that. And no, no, no. I don't mean who can hit the merge button. I mean, when is that person supposed to hit the merge button? Once the pull request has gotten what? One LGTM if and you, one approval? If you have the ability to merge pull requests, uh, then you are able to do that after one reviewer has reviewed and approved the uh, pull request. But so by convention, we wait for two. Yeah. Well, it it's up to whoever is the author of the pull request right now. So it is ambiguous. And what is a reviewer right now today? Reviewers and approvers are the same thing today. OK. So it, it couldn't be re reviewed by uh, uh, some anonymous new uh, a new contributor, right? Yeah, they have to have permissions to um, review and approve in like GitHub. So basically, it's it's a separation of GitHub native permissions and Tide permissions. There are no Tide permissions right now. Tide doesn't do anything except for assign labels to stuff and doesn't act on them. We right. only use GitHub permission system, the GitHub permission system right now. And correct me if I'm wrong, the thing discussed in that linked pull request is we are going to move to a three tier system where we have members, reviewers, and approvers, correct? And some project owners. But that's, that's not relevant for the purposes of like merging pull requests, no. right? Okay, so in the new world, when is a pull request going to be eligible to be merged? Are we going to so do it based that, on time so it happens automatically? Yeah. So the the con the um, contribution guide is now discussing a move to the tied labeling system, where somebody opens a pull request, tied will assign two. Uh, people from the reviewer or approvers sections in the owner's file. And 
as soon as one of those people who is assigned uh, LGTMs it and approves it, then it's good to merge and Tide will merge it. <clears throat> so the LGTM has to come from an assignee. Yeah. Which has and to And that's be why that's why members can slash LGTM uh, and get their label on there and approve a PR, but it doesn't actually affect the mergeability of that PR. Okay. And so therefore they can build up the ability to become a reviewer because they've actually made reviews. Do we have an open issue to utilize Tide? Uh, no, that hinges on um, that PR being merged, I would say. I mean, we can obviously make one right now. And so didn't, I have two things to say merged? about that. What's that? I thought that PR merged. No, it's going to merge today though. And we can make follow-ups to it. Okay, so that's that's all well and good. But the the reason I created this issue is because based on my confusion here, and there's probably a couple of things I can think of, I think it would be good for us to have a page in our docs that's like a, a on-ramp guide of you know how how do I go from nothing to opening my first pull request and getting it merged? Like what do I need to do? That sort of stuff. That explains right. the the conventions or the community or whatever. Could you could you do me a favor and close this issue in the SDK repo and reopen it in the community repo? Just because this is not SDK specific. Sure. Um, can you do that? Yes. Would that got I? Would a contribution guide apply to operator SDK and OLM right now? Because I'm not sure that we're going to yeah. have the same processes. So or at least for right now. Is, is it a goal to eventually unify like operator SDK and OLM and whatever else lives under operator framework under one sort of community guidelines? Well, that's what those PRs are. So if I become a reviewer in Operator SDK, will I be a reviewer in OLM? No, um, you have to you have to get the process going as a member of the Operator Framework organization to become a reviewer in individual sub projects. Okay. So it's all outlined in that in that document. But becoming a member to the Operator Framework organization is the entry point to all of that. That is what that uh, document discusses. And I believe that's that itself is fairly clear uh, and the process to become a reviewer as well, but not necessarily as like somebody who's just opening up pull request. So yeah, I, th I think this new contributors guide is a good thing to have. It just should be in a centralized location in the community repo. Okay, I opened up that over on uh, community. As a very brief aside, um, we don't currently have a triage for any issues in the community repo. Something to consider, uh, but I don't want to derail the meeting for right now. So let's come back to that. My, my thought, uh, we're aligned on that. <laughs> my thoughts went there as well. <laughs> well, I was wondering so how those are managed. There's, I guess there's a, that's kind of a problem because, yeah, I don't want to talk about this too much. Um, but I will note that recently the operator framework monthly meeting got like it ended because we're having all these meetings for individual sub projects. So I don't know how that would even fit in to uh, any of these individual sub project triages, but I would bring that up with, um, with Diane. Anyway, yeah, let's continue. Yep. Sounds good. <laughs> Place scorecard images in all files of the tree. Uh, looks like there's already someone assigned. Uh, there's a lot of detail I just skimmed through, obviously. Uh, so it's interesting that this is a good first issue and someone assigned themselves. Um, do, do we have a, uh, first of all, is. If you go, go, if you go, I, I can I can easily explain this one. If you go in the sure. first comment, 
you see that it's a good first issue because it has the implementation already. Um, Joe make a, a implementation to replace the scorecard image, the tag for the dev one, because when we run the tests, we need to build the images and to use the, the images with the code that was changed, you know, to ensure uh, that we are testing uh, all chains made. So now the implementation that we have just just replace um, the imaging specific manifests. Uh, and the problem with that is like, if we go there and add a new manifest with each image, the test is your pass. And we will not know that we are not in test with the dev image because it, all everything works because you use the the released image and you'll be silent you know you'll be a, a worker the scenario the other thing that you can happen is, is like we if it is in this scenario after that we can go there and introduce a bug and you discover just when we we do the release and you, this image be you know publish if it's the bug is in the image and then the the CIO starts to fail and you'll be very hard we have the in my opinion at least we have this like oh it's possible that we add a new manifest for the scar card and we are not in use the in the test is the image that is built in the CI do, is it make sense? Could I explain the scenarios? The other problem is like the bundle manifests using the scorecard image. The bundle is generated because it, when we created the project, we scaffold the images inside of the config director in the <laughs> manifests inside of the config director then we run the bundle. The bundle will use the data that is in the config to generate the bundle manifests. However, if we change the order, you know, if I run the bundle first and replace after in the specific ones in the config, the bundle will still use in the scorecard images addressing pointing to the, the tag release 1.0.0 instead of dev, that is the image that was built in the CI for retest. So it's another scenario that we can have an issue and you will not check. If we address the, the EP that we have for the sample generation, for example, we will create the sample first, we will run the bundle first, and then the test is you take the sample that is everything done, and you then just replace it to you, the manifest to use the, the tag that she, of the image that she was built when you push the pull request. So in this scenario also, we will issue if the manifest inside of the bundle using the scorecard uh, point for the release tag instead of the dev one. And my suggestion here was like a cheese code was tested already because I was doing some proof of concepts. So it's like a, just a, instead of if you go there and replace the file A and B only, like a, replace everything inside of a config scorecard and bundle manifests. So no matter if you add more manifests using the image or not, no matter the order, we can ensure that the behavior is independent. So this was my suggestion. Um, and I think I was not clear because Joe thought that it was just related to sample generate. And in the last comment, I clarify two scenarios that I try to explain now, which are the motivations for I suggest that. And the Cheese Folk has been working some cleanups. So 
working another one, like to centralize it, is replaces in a function that are very simple as well. Because it is, we, um, she, I created this issue with the, the community developer, you know, what we discuss and if he has no objections, we move with the small change because the code is just a replace, you know, replace the, fun, the, the method that it should they replace the image, the tag image in the specific files for one that you replace it in any file in the director. It's just that the, the change. It's very simple. It's a Which lot of words for simple. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's the motivations, the motivations, yeah, yeah. Uh, the contest, it's maybe hard because, it, you know, how the CI works, you know, we build the images, these images are published, the users, when they scaffold the project, they do point for the 1.0 image, they use the image that is released, and in the tests, we need to use the image that was built inside of the Travis. Otherwise, how we can ensure the changes? Because if I go there and change something that affects this image, I need to, you know, when I run the command, it is fail. If I'm testing with the master image, it will not fail. Because it's not the code that I just changed in the pull request. All right, do we have a, a targeted milestone? Looks like there's, look, look to me, it looks like there's still some discussion here. Uh, yeah. And it's unclear, the, the, the assignee came in after the clarification or came before it, which seems a little odd. Uh, I'm not sure if this person has enough information to succeed. Um, yeah, and, no, uh, actually this person has because he is wor was working on that. So oh, okay, this came in from another pull request, you know, it's like a comment in the pull request. So, because this came the issue and everything. Maybe the right thing would be like a science, uh, I think we need jo Joe's reply on that. So maybe it needs discussion, um, something like that. Um, I, yeah, I would do that. And I would probably remove good first issue and help on it because we haven't discussed this fully yet. <laughs> that, um, I would, I'm glad you said that. That's exactly. I, I. It seems odd to have as a good first discussion and, or I'm sorry, good first issue and needs discussion seem to be um, oh, the opposites of each other. Just to clarify why these labels was added, but uh, AG say sorry uh, if you, <laughs> for your faults because it, science how it is start. One fault has getting all first issues. And the issue that he worked that he motivated is one, mm. you know, uh, has the comments, has the discussion. So he said, I do that now. And I told for him, no, let's, we don't need to do this in, in this pull request. Let's uh, create one issue, you know, assign it for yourself. And we, we can discuss there. And after we, you, you can just, Copying the page, the code, the know, and like putting a pull request, something like that. So this is a follow-up to a PR that was merged. Yeah, yeah it's the second follow-up. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I looked at the original issue. There's a there's a PR thirty nine twenty, and in there the discussion that's here, um, in the description is part of that PR. And that's why this issue looks like it was created. So a PR was created, it was merged. There was some follow-up that came up and they decided to create this issue based on that information. Thank you. Uh, no, do we have a targeted? Go ahead. I think we, Camilla, we should probably edit the top where it says as a follow-up of 3912, we should also add 3920. Yes. PR to it because that would have helped. I hope I will do that now. Sorry, three nine two two. I will do that now. 
Thanks. That's awesome. Uh, good feedback. Uh, backlog? Can I give a second? I, can, I think so. I think so. It's fine. Oh, and I got a third. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Um, you are on point, Camilla. Uh, upgrade SK. Yep. Since I open for myself, for I don't forget to actually. Uh, okay. You want to be assigned? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> because it, uh, just to give you the context, uh, just to share, we use the TZ image in upstream, the the Kubi proxy one. This is just to, just to protect the request that you are made to the manager, the 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 controller. Do you know the pod that we run the operator? And the image that we use now is not rootless, so it's like a security issue. Uh, I have been contributing with this project, the Kubi pro, pro, uh, proxy to solve that. I started to, to do the pull request for upstream, and after we should take the change here as well. Uh, I need to just figure out how I build the Kubi blah, blah, blah proxy image for Kubi Builder first. <laughs> so I created, but I don't forget to do you know that, but yeah, just to. Wait, uh, a, a few things. One, is this, this seems like a purely upstream issue because the only thing you're saying here that the SDK needs to do is bump Kubi Builder versions after a PR gets merged and Me? test it. Yeah, we need to, I, I put exactly we, what we need to do after uh, we have the the proxy 0 0.7, uh, which is the part that I'm working with. I will make a comment to clarify that. Um, we need to bump the, the upstream when all get measured. And we need to check Ansible and Helm because in upstream, in V2, you maybe, maybe make it change, you know, make a fix that could be applied in both to ensure that Ansible, Helm, and Go is still having all the same behavior. So, since the templates are copying to paste, we need to, you know, give a look in the change of the new commit. And the other thing that we need is manually update the Ansible and the Helm templates as well to start to use uh, the new image. Makes okay. sense. Yeah, can you, I, I think this also suffers from not following the correct template because I don't know if this is Go, Ansible, or Helm. I mean, it says in the description, but they're not labeled. This isn't labeled correctly. Um, and I, we have talked about this before. We don't want to be creating issues that are upstream only. You're saying that this isn't because Ansible and Helm have to be dealt with. Um, so anything that like pertains to bumping the cube builder version or bumping it a dependency version should probably be removed from the issue text here, just cause like that's, that's implied. Um, and I don't want to have a bunch of issues sitting around that are just like bump cube builder version, bump controller runtime version. It doesn't really add anything. Um, well, how so, do we, if we are waiting on a cube builder to get a, a cube builder PR to get merged, and then we need to bump after that, how would we track that work? Well, I would just say link the issue or pull request here and say that uh, this is blocked on this particular pull request or issue. Um, I guess here it's kind of context important because we need to make the same changes in Ansible or Helm. Um, at first, that's what I just what I thought this issue was is just a like bump kube builder issue. Uh, there's more to do than that, but in general, I would like to leave that out and just put like blocked on this particular um, pull request or issue. But uh, regardless, uh, let's add the language Ansible and language Helm uh, labels to this. Uh, 
you like in the backlog? Or do we have a targeted time frame? Um, I think. I also plan it as well with more information. I opened it for myself, but if the others would like to work, it's fine. I should supplement to put all. Uh, well, I'm not really sure what when that PR is going to get merged. Um, so I would put it in the backlog because it will yeah. get groomed in the upcoming grooming meeting. Yeah, that's all I was looking for mainly. Is, uh... Okay, great. Um, sounds like everybody knows what needs to be done. Um, yep. Any other concerns? Hearing none. Uh, let's see here. Docs, keep the title of the documents consistent. Okay, so it sounds uh, just skimming over this. It looks like there's some discussion still needed, or is there a decision that's already been made? So is it we need to reach consensus? Seems to indicate that we need a uh, discussion. Is that true? Ah, uh, this one. It's like we just discussed it today. Uh, the organization about the the subliminal. Uh, so in. When we was working this task, uh, many this discussion came. So I thought that it was better create an issue and to tackle this in another moment, you know, not being the same pull request. So currently we have a few documents that has operators as you can in the title, and we have documents that doesn't have. So in my humble opinion, we should have a consistency, or we have in all documents, or we have in non documents, like uh, follow the same standards. And then I put the context why um, the operator SGK uh, word in the title starts to occur. Uh, she starts to occur because. Uh, it, when we search something in the internet, in the Google, you search like uh, how to upgrade a uh, uh, project operator CTK version X, uh, you know, we, we always, you put your operator SDK uh, into the question. So if the documents has not operator SDK, they probably will not be properly indexed and you probably and you don't you'll be fine. So this in the past we we did some pull requests it has more than one issue I found one uh, to update the titles of the documents. Uh, but you now we don't have all follow the same standards. So is that you know so if he has a consensus that we doesn't need the operator SDK in the titles, we can go there and remove it from all titles. If it has a consensus that we should have operator SDK in all titles, we we'll go there and ensure that all titles has. The other point is when we look in the menu, we don't see the title unless it has just the title. We see the link title which is like a summary of the title. So the, the word operator SDK never will appear in the menu if it has the linked title. So I think this is a little bit broad. Um, it might, we might be better served by more smaller issues. Like I, the one that pops out here, like let's be consistent about the, the versions. Um, I think that makes sense. Uh, whether we want to do have operator SDK in the menu, I think that makes sense as a separate issue. But I don't, I don't think we want to like rename all the docs in one pull request. The the issue is like, should we have is is to answer that should we have operator SDK in all documents or not? What is the consensus? 
this is the issue. You know, should we have the operator CDK in the title of all documents or not? If yes, okay, so we can go there and update the documents. If not, we can go there and update the documents. Just reach the consensus and remove the word operator CDK or add the word operator CDK where it doesn't is already. Like search for title and check if you all has operator CDK, the places that it doesn't have add. I mean, I think it makes, I think it seems pretty redundant to have operator SDK in all the titles. So, um, I mean, I think we can remove those where they don't make sense, but I, I don't know. I, I kind of think maybe we should make a list of those places and decide with the list. Okay, maybe maybe we can put it need the discussion and to let the people think about because okay, it has the pros and the cons. If we remove it, the title just appears in the page of the document, not in the menu. So if we remove it from all documents, probably the documents will not be located in the Google search. If we keep in all documents, probably the documents will be located in the Google search, but maybe it's redundant. It's prolixic, as you said. So, has one pros and one cons, you know? So, <laughs> just. Well, operator SDK is always included in the footer. So, I mean, I'm not really great with. I'm not really great with the uh, like, um, what's it called, S SEO. But I don't think that we need to be too worried about it. Um, I think it's redundant. Let's just remove it. I don't think it will affect. Okay, so, okay. I think Eric's vote thought that it was redundant as well. So we have two votes to remove. I don't have a vote, any, any, for me, I, I don't have opinion about that. So, just to raise the question that she starting the discussion. I want to take ownership of this, of the, it sounds like there's movement, like there's a, there's, there's two votes to remove extra titles or redundancies. Would, would someone from the community say something? I doesn't know if it's someone that you, uh, mm -hmm. has, we have a lot of a coral, uh, maybe someone of the community that you usually search for the stuff, it has some reason for believing that it's good or not, it's okay. I just want to know if the others would you like to give you some opinion? Yeah, it's, it's um, going that route, it's hard to know um, what what the acceptance criteria is, like what meaning, um, how, how many is quorum? <laughs> is, or is there a time limit? Or how are they being solicited? or any of that. I imagine somebody would want to spearhead this and drive it uh, in order to get ever, whatever the quantity is of, of participants. I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't think that this is one that we need like an enormous amount of consensus on. I think we can just do it. And if it causes a problem, we can file a different issue and switch it back the other way. Perfect. I agree. That's where my head was too. Uh, but that takes... Uh, an assignment. I, I agree to just if he, I doesn't know if it's someone that she is in the meeting would you like to speak because usually just has a lot of people would be nice get to their input as well. I put you, we have it, three votes to remove. I'm, I'm just going to take this on and do it. Design to Eric. Perfect. Any more discussion on that? Should we get some, can I get some consensus around completing this task of looking at the task? No. All right. You guys need more humor in your life. Been isolated way too long. 
Right. Before any of folks say that I didn't follow the, the template. template. <laughs> it was not, the template is very nice. I usually ask it for everybody to follow the template as well, but in cheese, has another that she, the template is not really helpful, you know, it's like it, it's too much because it's too simple. Alex in the same pull request make a comment uh, about to be remove the very very same doc. I'm okay with that. It's like a, I agree with him. It's like a duplication of the same very uh, definition. It's a convention, so I'm okay with, but. Just erasing again, if someone has an objection, maybe it's time to say. If not, we can go there. And if he, everybody agree that we can remove these documents, we can go there and remove. It's like very simple. I'm in, I'm in the camp of removing it. I mean, obviously I made the comment, but um, in general for things like this, just just do it. And if anybody objects on the PR, then obviously we'll talk about it there. Um, yeah. And also these changes aren't like huge things. They're like maintenance things. Um, sometimes we realize that something we did before is no longer relevant um, docs wise and it needs to be corrected. And if somebody else, you know, complains in the community that, uh, the thing you removed had information that they thought was useful, then we can revert whatever. But I don't want to like just sit around and debate whether to like make small docs changes. It's, not, it's, not, it's, it's not a, it's like, a, okay, I could go that into the pull, do the pull request, you and the other person approve, and after one week, someone came, oh, we need to revert. So I would try to avoid that, just make it the question uh and you give you the opportunity for everybody answer also sometimes in the pull requests if he has a lot of comments that it's not exactly in the scope of the change so in my humble opinion if we start to do all it's like you're not to finish <laughs> you know it's like too much so i i thought that you maybe would be good start to raise things uh, before, you know, it's far down, spend time. It's easy just to write the, the question. They go there, do the pull request, and, uh, and you keep start other uh, discussions. It's okay. Has someone right. no objection for that? No? So, can you put for me? I will do that. Perfect. All right, I think that wraps up um, what we can. Um, one more thing I want to talk about. Please. Um, so uh, and with regards to the doodle poll for scheduling, the backlog grooming meeting, I figure pretty much everybody who's going to respond at this point has responded. And serendipitously enough, there is a single time that everyone can meet at. Wow. So. Uh, pretty certain this is what we're going to go with, which is Wednesdays at 11 a.m. 11 a.m. What time zone? <laughs> uh, PST. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I did. Yeah. What's the time is now in PST? 12:52. Yeah. So it would have been an hour ago on Wednesday. Yeah. Okay. And which Wednesday is going to be the first? It's every three weeks, right? It should be every three weeks. The first one will be next week's Wednesday, so the 30th. And uh, I'll see if I can set up a meeting in the Google group. I think it is one maybe would it be good to raising the channel after that because I believe that we all need to check the calendar to see if he we never have some leaching as well in this time. Just to ensure. But it is time. I understand that she has no time that everybody say, okay, I would like this one. 
Well, if we all filled out the poll and we all said that we were free then, then we better be free then. Otherwise, we lied. So. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I just wanted to make an announcement. I'll be sending out the meeting invites at some point. Perfect. Thanks for bringing that up, Jonathan. Is there any, any other uh, business or news that we need to talk, discuss? I think I have... um, the. Go. The bug triage meeting before we actually have that first meeting so next monday uh if we have some time at the end of that we should probably go over the format um and so we're familiar with that i assume that um the invite will actually have a link to how we're going to run the grooming meeting uh and like format related things so that should cover it for like the entire operator framework organization, but it'd also be nice to just have like a, a quick go over of that. Can I suggest that a small group gets together, uh, tosses up a draft of that, and then we can just go over it in the meeting um, rather than try and create something from scratch with a bunch of people? Yeah, Austin, do you wanna uh, lead setting that uh, group up? Sure. I guess it would just be you and the community chairs, pretty much. Uh, that works. Okay. Um, do you want to have a meet, like an actual meeting about that? I think that would be reasonable. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Thanks. Milo, did you have something else? No, I thought she. Uh, I thought Eric. And yeah, you were yeah, I. I just would like to make a question. Uh, we have in Operator SGK two directors. Uh, I will send it in the chain. Maybe it's not required to say now, but we have the proposals and the designs. Um, it is very outdated because it proposes now we have a repository for the operator framework specific to do the APs. And the, the design is also very old. Uh, so in my humble opinion, I think we could remove this, this both from master. You keep the historic because it has in the tags. Uh, but it's just I, a suggest. I tried to remove these a while back, and I think that there was a little bit of pushback that we didn't want to remove the history. So maybe we just could move these into like a legacy directory inside the proposals area. Well, I mean, the history is captured in Git, right? Like, it doesn't matter what the current state is. Yeah, because it has in the tags. If we check it, okay, we remove it from master. And we check the tag 1.0, the documents will be there forever. So, sure, but still, like, like git log dash dash follows in the file name if you knew the file name too. It's still in the history. Right, but if you wanted to know why something was the way that it was and you don't know that that document exists, I don't think you would ever find it. Fair. I think you're looking for the, the award in the GitHub and today the documents you came up. Because if you are looking like uh, for something, you probably you like uh, search for, for the word, specific yeah, but, word. But search doesn't look through things that have been deleted. It only looks at uh, master. So uh, I, I, I will say this, everything that's currently in the design directory has no bearing on anything that currently exists in the SDK. And so if you did want to know why some feature was designed for, let's say, 020, um, you look at that milestones directory, that's where it would be. But you wouldn't know that code even existed in the first place unless you had 020 checked out. And that would contain the design directory. So I'm okay removing the design directory. The proposals directory should stay around because there will be proposals to the SDK repo specifically because they don't affect anything else in the operator framework. 
for example, we have an upcoming end-to-end uh, -end, um, like scripts and uh, other related things, uh, refactor proposal. Uh, so that will be submitted directly to the proposals directory here. Uh, what I would also say though, is that a lot of this stuff can be maybe cleaned up um, and moved into a legacy directory because uh, these doc, like a lot of these documents were put into this uh, directory before we as a uh, community started putting stuff into the uh, enhancements repository. So like they're just an outdated, uh, so or I guess let's, a lot of let's these do it this way. into the enhancements repository. Let's file an issue for this um, and we can capture any of this discussion there. Um, I think I'm probably convinced that we could delete the, uh, the really old one. Um, but uh, yeah, let's just go through the normal process. Okay. Okay. Okay, sounds fine. Would you mind uh, creating that issue, Austin, since you were the original one to try to remove these? Uh, sure. It's a wolf. It's a wolf. Make sure to follow a template. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh. yeah. Um, what the problem that you are trying to solve? Mm. <laughs> I just want to remove this old stuff. <laughs> this old stuff. <laughs> I mean, yeah. What I is the solution? <laughs> you are a proposed solution. Just delete. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, we meet again uh, September uh, 28th, so uh, a week from now. Um, and um, that's the end of this meeting. So uh, appreciate you joining. And uh, yeah, thanks for contributing. See you guys. Thanks. See you. Bye-bye. Really thank you.